In the next example also, we have two balls. One ball, say it is given some plus 10 micro coulomb charge and another ball which is also given plus 10 micro coulomb charge. Just imagine. Remember when you are giving positive charge, you are not giving anything positive to that, you are picking electrons. What happens now? They will repel apart. Correct no? So, this ball will be standing like this and this ball will be standing like this. So, I change the position. Now, they repel apart. This is influencing or this ball is exerting a force on this in this direction. That ball is exerting a force in this direction. You understood the direction of force. But we don't know how much force is exactly there between these two. We are interested in finding out that. This was first found by a French engineer Charles Augustus Coulomb. 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 You remember his name? The, his name is the unit of charge. And this precisely is the reason why his name is given to this unit of charge. Now, why? Coulomb lived in France in the 1770s. And this is almost uh, say 50, 60 years after the, the, the death of Newton. Newton we are familiar because we were talking about Newton last year. He was an engineer. Probably in India he passed an e exam equivalent to our NDA, NDA exam. And he became a uh, military engineer there in France. And it was during his time that the French Revolution happened and he resigned all the official posts and started some research on this kind of electricity and he came out with a law called Coulomb's law. Now Coulomb's law or using Coulomb's law you can find how much force is there between these two. See here you have two charges repelling or if I give one as negative charge there will be attracting ok here let it be positive. So it can be attraction or repulsion depending on what type of charges you keep here. Now we studied Newton's law. I write Newton's law here for you to recollect. F is equal to G M1 M2 divided by R square. If you want to find the force between two masses, this is the law you use. Coulomb was aware of this law. So he found a new law using experiments, experimentally determined experiments. And you know for finding that force, he found a torsion balance, okay. The same torsion balance that Cavendish later used for finding the gravitational constant. And it was he who found or devised this torsion balance for finding the force between two charges. And his law can also be written in a similar fashion like uh, Newton's law. I am writing his law here, F is equal to, you see how I am writing, F is equal to, you see this, 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0, that stands in the place of this G, this much is a constant, into Q1, Q2 divided by R square. I hope you can recollect from the last class, Q is the charge, symbol for charge. So, it is, this is taken as Q1, the charge on the first two body. This is taken as Q2, charge on the second body. And the distance between the bodies, this distance is taken as R appearing here. And this is a constant. So, you may write Coulomb's law to your notebook. Coulomb's law F is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into Q1 Q2 divided by R square. Sounds exactly like uh, Newton's law. There is a big difference here. 
here you have only attraction but it can be attraction or repulsion depending on the nature of the charges q1 and q2 now how to put uh, coulomb's law into a definition form or a law how can you state that the force between two charges remember these charges must be stationary for this equation to be correct okay so we say like this coulomb's law states that the force between two stationary charges is directly proportional to the product of their charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them so you can probably in the next as the first step you can write this as f proportional to like this law can be stated in a similar fashion as you state newton's law so this is that you study that eh? you have to memorize that and the next logical step is you need a constant here the constant is 1 by 4 by epsilon 0 you have to write that this constant if you remember this was a universal constant where you can use this anywhere anywhere on universe you can use it but this constant is slightly different you know you might be thinking what is this epsilon 0 how to write epsilon a kind of decorated e with the 0 that is epsilon 0 what is this epsilon 0 am i right epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space it is the permittivity of free space what is permittivity something that permits let's see that okay see this permittivity last year we studied conductivity thermal conductivity resistivity etc here it is conductivity some property now this is a property of the intervening medium between the two balls between the two balls here it is air if you are doing this in a classroom it is air if you are dipping the whole thing in water the medium will be water okay here this zero indicates that nothing is between the balls okay means you have air or vacuum so this equation is actually for air so you may write that there is nothing between these two charges is indicated by this zero okay or air so this equation is for air and epsilon zero see i can tell you what is epsilon zero epsilon zero is another constant its value is 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 12. No, now you have to write the unit. Can you guess the unit of epsilon 0? If you take epsilon 0 here, f will be coming here. So, unit of this epsilon 0 will be the unit of the factor on the right side. So, that will be Coulomb square into Newton raised to minus 1 meter raised to minus 2. So, that is the unit of epsilon 0. And if you substitute this value of epsilon 0 over here, what you will get is, I am correcting that, f is equal to 9 into 10 raised to 9. 9 into 10 raised to 9. What I did is, do not confuse, I substituted this value in 1 by 4 by epsilon 0 you can uh, check it by yourself you will get this value okay so f is equal to 9 into 10 raised to 9 into q1 q2 divided by r square so i am forgetting this uh, epsilon 0 here after this equation is okay now let's find out how much force is there between these two spheres the charge q1 and q2 is there just imagine r is say some 1 meter then you can calculate f as f is equal to you write the formula copy this into your notebook write the formula substitute and find out so i am substituting for you 9 into 10 raised to 9 into do that carefully yeah? 
10 into 10 raised to minus 6. Why this minus 6 is coming? Micro is transferred or micro is converted into SI or into coulombs into 10 into 10 raised to minus 6. This charge is converted divided by 1. I am substituting that. The answer will be, you guess the answer. You will get around 0.9 Newton. So, it is a small force. So, probably these bolts will not go that much far apart because the force involved is very small. So, I erased uh, all we have written in between. Okay, some charge. So, that is it. We are back to the earlier stage. Now, we know how much force is there between these two. Now, another interesting situation that happened while this experiment was conducted by Coulomb was, see, just imagine what will happen or what would have happened if Coulomb kept a notebook in between. Suppose he took his notebook and kept it in between the balls like this. Will there be any change? When he kept something in between, what he observed was, this is a very interesting observation, you should not miss this, the balls came little closer. So, you have two balls, charged balls rippling apart. If you keep a book in between, balls comes nearer a little. Why they are coming nearer a little? They are coming nearer a little because this force is reduced. The force is reduced because the medium has changed. So, that is it. If you keep another medium between, the force is decreased. So, naturally, he being a scientist and you know, Coulomb was the best experimental scientist France have ever seen. Now, his name is inscribed on the Eiffel Tower in Paris. So, next time when you go to Paris and visit Eiffel Tower, see his name written there and the names of 72 scientists are inscribed on Eiffel Tower. Okay. He was such, an, a, such a distinguished scientist that he tried many other things. And I hope you guessed. What he wants to know is, is there any material which if he keep in between, the, the force will be increased. And to his surprise, there was no object like that. That means, if you keep two balls in air, they have the maximum force between them. Any other material you keep in between, the force decreases. You may write that. The force between two charges is maximum when they are in air. In any other medium, the force decreases. And he conducted experiments based on that. And I must tell you that. Probably he may not have conducted experiments, but we imagine like that because the situation is required for us in the exam. As a distinguished scientist, he studied different materials in between. And the one material which reduces the force drastically was water. And you actually need permittivity of water for filling here to find the force inside water. If you look at a standard table of scientific constants, you will not, you will not find any epsilon medium there. What you will find is something else. We have to study that also. We find another constant called uh, dielectric constant. Dielectric constant. Because when you keep water here, say for example, the force between these two decreases means the electric field produced by one on the other is actually died out a little. So, some property called a dielectric that is there. Okay. So, we call that constant as dielectric constant. It is derived, it is defined as K is equal to epsilon medium divided by epsilon 0. So, that is a ratio of the 
permittivity of the medium to the permittivity of air is called a dielectric constant. Of course, dielectric constant of air will be epsilon 0 by epsilon 0 that will be 1, ok. And for this equation if you need epsilon medium, we can take epsilon 0 into k. This k is listed in all scientific tables. For example, it is there in your class tables. And the value of k for water is 80. Value of k for paper is only 2. And you know 80 will be a dimensionless constant as it is the ratio of similar quantities. So, I am rewriting this equation. Instead of epsilon medium, I can write epsilon 0 into k. So, I am rewriting this equation like this. F is equal to epsilon medium is written as epsilon 0 into k. So, I hope you understood the change I made. This much of force in air. So, I am writing it as F air. F medium is equal to F air divided by k. So, if k of water is 80 or approximately 100, this will be F air divided by 100. So, the force between the charges will be reduced to 1 by 100th of the force in air if you keep it in water. Okay. So, this is precisely the reason why sodium chloride, the common salt dissolves quickly in water. Why sodium chloride quickly dissolves in water? You know, you studied in your chemistry classes that sodium chloride is Na plus Cl minus Na plus some ionic compound with some face centered cubic structure something. Okay. And this space between Na plus and Cl minus what we call as the interstitial space will be occupied with water if you put it in water. So, what happens is when water comes in between the attraction between Na plus and Cl minus will be reduced to 1 by 100th of its value in air. Early if it was earlier if it were 100 Newton now it is only 1 Newton. Correct no? So, the force is decreased. So, Na plus and Cl minus starts crumbling and if you give a stirring it dissolves. How is that? So, we are winding up today's class. Today, what all things we learned is we enjoyed electric field with a few examples and later we studied Coulomb's law, Coulomb's law for air and Coulomb's law for a medium and we studied a dielectric constant. You have to do some homework based on this. Study and copy example 1, example 2 and example 3 from the NCRT textbook. And you may read up to page 10 in the NCRT textbook. And you can see it's running matter, no problem. It's very easy to read. You have to improve your physics vocabulary by reading them. And before we conclude today, I must thank you for uh, seeing my classes on YouTube. Please share with your friends. Please subscribe. If you have any, any comments, please uh, comment it below. Or if you have any doubts, please join the WhatsApp group for uh, clearing your doubts on physics. The link of the WhatsApp group is given in the description box. Please uh, WhatsApp your doubts. Continue your preparations for the exams. Stay healthy. Thank you.